15 to 20 minutes to get their lunch. Very sure. You just, you get in. <laughs> Why did everyone study so much less than us? That was my dream teenage life. Hello. Teenager. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm missing. Crazy. I had three crash. <laughs> really? <laughs> Serious? <laughs> but I'm so happy. Well, I guess I'm still like in my teenage years right now. Whoa. I mean, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I think my teenage experience has been a little bit different than a lot of Americans because I was homeschooled. So it was a lot different. I didn't really go to a regular high school. I, I, I like my life, so I think I like being a teenager. For us, until fifth grade, um, we had to study really hard to get into a better school in sixth grade. That's why we had to study a lot and take a lot of pressure in fifth grade. And that's why I don't think my teenage years are that great. I always realize what it's like to work. You know, I want to do work, but now that I'm working, I want to be a teenager again. My teenage era could be a little bit different from normal Japanese people because I went to Canada when I was 14 years old and I was exposed to a lot of new cultures, languages, and yeah, I learned a lot of stuff in my teenage era. <laughs> wow. In America, homeschooling is pretty common now, especially after COVID, which I've kind of found that it's homeschooling isn't that common, right? Like a lot of people from different countries don't really homeschool, but the system is just the same as public school and like private school. So usually it's in elementary school, it's up until fifth grade, and then starting from sixth to eighth grade is middle school, and then ninth to twelfth is high school. We don't have like that much homeschooling. We don't prefer that. Our parents don't, unless and until it's really some important, like the kid is uh, like medical leave or something. That's a different thing. But parents prefer their kids to send to school. The main thing is up to the 10th, like the high school, you have to get so good grades so that you can go to a good college or university. Well, we don't really do homeschooling in Bangladesh either because it, like she said, if, he, if the student has a medical condition, maybe that's, that's when he'll get homeschooled. But other than that, um, we have like uh, from first to fifth grade, we have uh, the elementary school level and which is also called the primary level and after that from 6th to 10th grade it's called a high school for us and from uh, 11 and 12 these two years are considered as college and after that you go to university so in indonesia we have public and uh, also private school and for the uh, grade itself the elementary school is six years the middle is three years and the high school is three years but for the high school we have kind of majority high school thing mm -hmm. that you can choose in the philippines we have at least 12 years the students will go straight ahead to grade school but some would have this non-compulsory preschool years that's actually one year and then six years in grade school and another six years in high school like four years in junior high school and another two years in your senior high school in iran there are in private school a normal and special school and about for a special school after finish elementary all the students should be uh, examination if all the students have a high grade can enter to the uh, that school if not enough grade go to the um, normal school is that exam hard yeah it's um, should be so study hard uh, yeah i think a bit similar to iran we have of course 12 years uh the thing in lebanon is our kids like they enter school very early which is something we're very proud of like at age of three years old i was writing and reading english and arabic so we teach english and arabic and the french school we teach french and Arabic. But nowadays the schools are a bit bland, so they are English, French, and Espanol. So all the Gen Z they speak the basic four languages. But yeah, we have like when you pass the ninth grade, you have to do the government exam. So it's a very, very difficult, intense exams. We have that as well, but after 12th grade. In Kazakhstan, Kazakh children, students are usually study for 11, 11 grades, sometimes 12. We also have uh, private schools. They have own system, totally own system. You need to be really prepared for to get there. You have two kind of uh, options, go to college after ninth grade or just finish total 11th of grades and go to the university after. 
So in Uzbekistan, the education system is kind of similar to Kazakhstan, I think. And for elementary school, we have four grades. For middle school, it's from fifth grade to ninth grade. And for high school, it's 10th grade, 11th grade. So we also study till 11th grade, so 11 years in total. And we do have option to finish nine grades of school and then go to the thing we call lyceum. And it really depends on which lyceum you want to go to. So some of them are good and like elite and people really want to go there but some of them are made for students who don't really want to go to university and finish their like higher education um, also in uzbekistan every year to move up grade you have to take exam 18 to 20 subjects so in korea if i say like the regular course so we have like the six years so elementary school course then uh, three years of middle and high school. Then, if I don't want to go to uni or college, maybe I can get a job or I can go to the uni later. And then if they decide to quit the, the class of uh, middle and high school, I knew like that they, they can just get some exam to pass that grade year or something then they can apply uni or college maybe. These days in Korea, we also have like the homeschooling a little bit. In Korea, like, uh, do you have like public and private schools? Because I see like the public is most common for Koreans and the private is like mostly like international schools with many for like nationalities. We also have like the private or like the public things, but I just heard like just big different thing is price. So in Japan, we basically have pretty much similar school system with Korea. But the special thing about Japan is you can choose if you want to go to high school or not. It's not mandatory. So only the mandatory is till junior high, which is on grade nine, I suppose. Yes, that's the difference we have between Korea and Japan. If you don't graduate high school in Japan, there's a lot of stuff that you cannot do, right? You cannot apply for a lot of job. You cannot do a lot of stuff. So um, there is a special exam for people who wants to have this, you know, permission. High school graduation certificate, right? So there's an exam in Japan as well. We have recess and lunch. So I went to public school and elementary school. It wasn't a public school, it was a charter school. So it's a little bit different. And that school was very, very strict. And we would have recess and lunch. And our lunch would sometimes only be like 20 minutes. Um, so a lot of kids actually couldn't eat lunch because kids who actually went and ate school lunch, they had to wait in line to get their lunch. But sometimes that would take 15 to 20 minutes to get their lunch. So then they wouldn't even have time to eat before class. Um, that school was very crazy. They wouldn't, they assigned seats at lunch. So you couldn't sit next to your friends. You had to sit next to whoever they assigned it to. And you weren't allowed to talk past a certain volume. So that school was very crazy. But then I went to a regular public school and it was more normal. And I got about 30 minutes for lunch and then 30 minutes for recess. Very, very short. Yeah, it was very short. <laughs> You just, you get in and you don't talk to your friends, you're like, you just eat. Mm, for me, a lot of times my mom would pack me lunches. Usually, I didn't really eat school lunch that much, but a regular school lunch is pizza, hamburgers. So in India, we have lunch time for like lunch and break time, like recess is like 30 to 50 minutes. So like we used to have lunch like in 20 to 30 minutes and then we have 20 minutes to just go here and there. So yeah, we can rest in that time. So well, lunch time was I guess okay like it also depends like in college life the lunch time was longer than in school time so in school time it wasn't that long it was like just 30 minutes I guess we don't have you know, like the people saw in the TVs like the lunches provided in the schools or colleges no we used to pack our lunch and then just take it with us and then we friends used to share like uh, oh you bring this okay I'm gonna eat that you can eat that so it it was kind of like that thing. Sharing is caring. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we used to get like 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes for lunch and uh, including recess. We didn't get that much, but uh, we did have cafeterias, but I didn't really buy stuff from cafeteria. I'd get uh, lunch 
that my mom used to make for me. We used to share lunch as well with friends. We'd sit together in like a table, circle table, then eat lunch together and share stuff. So in Indonesia, uh, our we don't have good sick like Korea. Like we need to pack our lunch uh, mm -hmm. since elementary. For the lunch time, we have one hour, usually at 12 to 1. Because why is one hour? Because that time we need to pray. Indonesia is majority Muslim country, so we need time to pray and lunch at the same time. And then for the menu itself, I remember that when I was elementary school, the most popular menu is chicken nuggets with rice. We don't eat like sandwich or something. We eat noodles or rice. That's it. In the Philippines, we have recess and lunch. So recess would be a little bit shorter than lunch break. Lunch break goes around like 30 minutes to an hour, depending on the school. We either eat at the canteen or we pack our lunch. Canteen is like um, a place where you can buy your food. Yeah, if you're, it doesn't have time for you to um, pack your lunch, then you can opt for that. In Iran, in a school, uh, there is no time for lunch time. The classes, uh, every classes is one hour or mostly. And uh, after finish each classes, it's uh, 15 minutes, about for free. And the students can come out. But there is some places like a food court and uh, students can buy a sandwich, cookie or uh, any a snack. So in Lebanon also the lunch time slash recess is all in one and it's 30 minutes. Uh, you study first uh, three hours and then you have the 30 minutes, it's for eating and then four hours and then you leave, you go home. Everyone just packs their own food, like everyone just eats I think the same thing. It's like cheese with some veggies on a pita bread and a snack which is usually a fruit. And we don't have like a cafeteria style like tables and whatever, we just have a like a very small peony jam. There's no place to sit there's only very few benches but everyone uses like the 30 minutes they eat and they walk at the same time because they have been sitting for three hours so everyone just eats and walks and it's 30 minutes they immediately just it's very fast very quick they didn't provide us the lunch time or for the lunch time we just had a break time 10 which is 10 minutes where we didn't have time to, to eat the properly so it was just like snacks coffees some small Cookie. So how many hours do you study per day? Four hours oh, okay. till nine to one. Excuse me, but why did everyone study so much less than us? I'm so jealous. We we start at eight and we finish around two thirty. That's really nice. I mean, I like that. But what did you do after? I want to know what you what you were up to. <laughs> you just hanging. That's so nice. That was my dream teenage life. So in Uzbekistan, our classes start at 8 a.m. and each class is either 40 minutes or 45 minutes depending on school. And we have breaks between classes for 5 minutes. And after the third class finishes, we have a break for 10 minutes. And then after the fourth class finishes, we usually have a break for 20 minutes. In 20 minutes, people usually either eat snacks that they prepared, so the lunch break is 15 minutes. I got a little surprised because in Korea, our class time is actually from 8 or 9 to 4 p.m. And then we got like 10 minutes break for each other. And then for lunch time, we have maybe like one hour's break. And then we, yeah, we absolutely had the uh, cafeteria kind of then we also had got some kind of the schedule for the meal yeah i, re I heard that it's free now. yeah it's free oh my god so in japan i'm gonna talk about elementary school and junior high school because i went to those two schools in japan and um, i started class around 8 30 and class last till around 3 to 4 or if you were upper grade maybe 5 p.m. lunch slash recess. We had a, about one hour and we had to eat in the classroom. That was the biggest difference between Korean. Well, I didn't know. Actually, when I was at elementary school, we also had some that kind of system and then we just pick, picked up and then we just 
uh, just had the meal on our table. So I realize right now, still now, that there are some high schools still they have that kind of same systems. What's crazy about Japanese uh, school is that there is a cleaning time. Students are responsible to clean up their own classrooms and they have to bring their own cleaning tools to school. Yes, and that takes about maybe 20 minutes every day. We have kind of the same thing in Uzbekistan and we also have hashat on Saturday. You basically clean the whole school oh, yeah. until wow. teachers can catch them. So it depends on what school you go to. Usually public schools, you don't wear a uniform, you just wear your own clothes. But if you go to a charter school or a public school, you wear uniforms. But with my charter school, they would have like a special day every month where you could wear your own clothes to school. So in India, every school has its own uniform. And it's really particular. Like, you know, you should have two braids for the girls. Like if you are going to in a one ponytail, you're the defaulter. You cannot, you're getting any punishment or some kind of thing. So also, and there are certain things like Monday, Tuesday, you wear one uniform and Thursday, Friday too. But Wednesday and Saturday is for white uniform. So you need to remember the days. Sometimes people do get fools, but after some time we get uh, used to that. But yeah, there was also like the shoes should be clean. Like from my experience, uh, from grade school to high school, uh, we had street schools in every uh, certain places because that's why I kept my hair short the whole uh, teenage like the whole school life because I didn't want to go through the uh, braiding in the morning like uh, before we uh, enter school there are like a line of uh, students who are corporals and um, teachers who were going to check your shoes, your uniform, your applets, your student ID card, if you're carrying them or not. If you're not, you're not going to enter the school that day. Uh, for public school, we have same uh, uniform because the government chooses it. For elementary school, white t-shirts and then red skirt or shorts. And it must be long. And then for the middle, the skirt is navy and the high school is gray. We have also Batik Day. It's kind of traditional uh, clothes from Indonesia. We wear it on usually on Wednesday or Thursday, just for the Islam mm -hmm. people or for the Muslim students. Yeah, it's mandatory with, uh, for the public school in Indonesia. So in the Philippines, we have uniforms. For me, I went private school. I was in a jumper. Of course, um, it has to be, the skirt has to be below the knee. So it has to be below the knee. So if you grow up, you have to buy a new one, a longer one. It has to be strict black shoes, like not navy blue, not brown. It has to be black shoes. And for the hair, it has to be tied unless your hair um, is really short. So if you have long hair, you can braid it, you can tie it. Just it has to look tight and um, you have to clean your bangs like you have to put away your bangs to add to that we also have PE day like PE uniforms like physical education uniforms in which um, we should be more comfortable it has to be white shoes like there shouldn't be any other um, colors in Iran because uh, my country is Islamic country all the women and girls should wear hijab long dress deep knee and pants, a boy and girls uh, are separate school, not in the same school. And uh, this uniform is the same in the one year, not change. Okay, in Lebanon, we just have a uniform, like a shirt, similar to hers, like the white one, just like a formal chemise. And in the summer, it's short sleeve, winter long sleeve with a pants, any dark shoes, it can be pink shoes, just no makeup and make your hair neat. They were not like that strict. It's just a uniform, not a big deal. In Kazakhstan, it depends on school requirements. Um, you know, we didn't have that that much strict uh, rules, and we had a chance to customize your own style. But it's supposed to be in classical way. But names it depends. Um, so in Uzbekistan, only private schools and international schools have their own school uniform, and for public schools. We only have to like, follow the rules. For girls, it's white shirt or a blouse and black skirt that should cover your knees. Also, for boys, they cannot grow their hair out. So the length should be two centimeters, within two centimeters. 
and if something is wrong with your uniform, you are gonna get told off in front of the whole school. So for the uniform, just when I was a teenager, only like middle and high school we had it and each school had on their different uniform. So normally they have scarf or pants and the washer, vest and the jacket and then it, it, uh, some school had the, the tie or bow, bow tie. Yeah, absolutely. We are still probably just customizing or dye hair or something like that. They kind of like similar like her, but some people just try to customize their skirt or pants length. Each school has on their uniform. Everyone know how Japanese uniform looks like, right? Maybe from anime. Yeah. Unfortunately, I did not have that pretty one because. That one's is for private school mostly, and I went to public school, so yeah, I had a more simple one. They're so strict about rules, just like she mentioned. For example, me, on my school, in my junior high, I had to wear a white sock, but then one day, I couldn't find a white sock from the laundry, so I just wore a black one and I went to school, but they sent me home just to change the sock. They're really strict. Unnecessary, more strict. Like it's it's really unnecessary. I feel like <laughs> hearing all these really nice <laughs> school life for me after listening to Japan and Uzbekistan. I'm so thankful for for the rules at my my high school. I thought they were very strict, but turns out we are so easygoing. <laughs> Come to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that America was more of a laid-back country when it comes to school and I was shocked by some of the lunch times because I thought that like 30 minutes was short but some people only had like 30 minutes counting recess and lunch. It is crazy. It was nice learning about everything. Today we compared Americas and 10 different Asian countries, uh, school uniforms and everything like that. <laughs> if you liked the video, please like comment down below and subscribe. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.